At King of the Table 9, Devon Lerett is not only risking his rematch against Levan Saginashvili, but he may also be risking the East vs West Super Heavyweight World title that he won against Hermes and defended against Denis Siplenkov. Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Pradeep from Amnesling News. If you end up liking the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. In this video, we'll discuss Gennady Kukvinia's comments about Devon Lerett. Have you noticed a trend that whenever Devon trash talks someone, it is always justified in the name of growth of the sport and pay-per-view sales. But whenever someone else does that, like Gennady Kukwini in this case that we are about to discuss, people attack that arm wrestler really bad. Then we'll discuss Alex Kurdecha's return. Finally waking up from the hibernation. Denis Siplenkov's preparation problems revealed by Babkan himself. Why couldn't Denis get to the best shape that he has ever been? And is that one of the reasons why Denis lost? Well, don't get me wrong, 90% of the result of the match depended on Devon Lerett being way too strong and Babkin and Dennis agree with that fact. But rest 10% can be divided into various categories and this is one of those. Then after that, we are going to discuss Jerry Kedret's next match. Is it Artem Morozov? Is it someone else? Is Morozov going to compete against Kordecha? Too much confusion. And finally, David Dadikyan's East vs West 11 opponent. He's going to compete there, but against who? We'll try to find that out. So, Gennady Kukvinia commented this against about Devon Lerett a few days ago. It's so cool when you're the fourth in the ranking and have the first one destroyed. This is a comment obviously after watching the East vs West super heavyweight rankings posted by Ang Terzi. I will be back soon. And people are just going against Gennady Kukinia so hard in the comment section. They're saying that destroyed, you didn't even beat Devon. The referees defeated Devon. So this was a problem in the first round. Although people did agree, including the athletes and the promoters, that small elbow fouls will not be called. Gennady's elbow foul in that first round was about that much. So should it have been called? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not a big fan of that rule, but when you say that small foul, small fouls will not be called, what is a small foul? That's kind of always confusing to the referees and difficult to monitor during the live match in real time. After that, the referee said that Devon's elbow went off the back of the pad. If that was the case, it didn't seem to me. But if that was the case, that was always a straightaway foul as discussed in the rules. No matter if it is that much outside of the perimeter of the pad, then it is a straight foul. Devon always says that whenever the match ends, the main goal of that match is that the winner should know that I'm the clear winner and the loser should know that yes, my arm got buried and I was defeated. On that day, I think Devon Lerett was defeated. And why do I say that? And why do I keep on bringing the fifth round of that match? In that round, Devon had his tight hook, hook lock in the first start. Gennady ripped it open. It felt like Devon's elbow is about to get breaken, broken and he lifted his elbow about that much above the pad. So he was willing to risk an elbow foul and potentially willing to lose the entire match just to avoid that pain in the elbow. You can clearly see that in the video that I'm, that I'm showing you right now. He lifted his elbow that much just to prevent that pain in the elbow otherwise Gennady could have damaged that and after that Gennady just buried him with the tricep press in the fifth round final round. So I think that's a clear winner right there and when Devon was going like two seconds early against Levan Saginashvili nobody was complaining about it and in this match in all of the five rounds Gennady went like 0.2 seconds early and everyone is showing it in slow motion and complaining about it. I think it should go both ways. In the rematch, Devon can win, but I think despite those loose rules and mistakes by the referee, we cannot say that Gennady was not the winner because he clearly was. So Devon Lerett is going to compete at King of the Table 9 against Georgi Swetkov. We all know that. Now Devon is risking his rematch against Levan. What if he loses to Georgi Swetkov? What if somehow magically that happens? Then he's in trouble. He's going to lose his East versus West Super Heavy title as well because now Engin Terzi has said that the titles are kind of unified. If his arm wrestlers lose their title at King of the Table, if they lose their match at King of the Table, the title goes away as well. At this point, I'm not sure if King of the Table has something to offer in a similar way to East versus West. Maybe they should also introduce their titles, then the champions can hold two belts. Maybe Devon can hold four belts, two King of the Table belts at both weight categories and two East versus West belts. That would be amazing. So it's also surprising that after having the same practice pulls, both of these arm wrestlers came to a 
completely different conclusion. Georgi Svetkov came to a conclusion that he can basically top roll Devon Leonard six times straight to the pad. The press is not even needed. And Devon came to a conclusion that he doesn't even need to train to top roll and beat Georgi Svetkov. That's kind of surprising. Well, I think Devon is going to win that for sure. But if there is a couple of percentage chance of him losing, then he'll be risking a lot. So Alex Kordecha is waking up from hibernation. He uploaded a video title that he's preparing for his upcoming match. Who is this match against? Most probably Artem Morozov because Morozov also posted a photo that he's going to come back in January. We'll discuss that one as well. I hope it is Morozov but Angie Terzi talked about this match a couple of times. In the first video he was saying that this match is confirmed. In the second one he was saying that this match may not be confirmed. So I'm not sure what fell through. I'm still hoping that this is the match. I don't have any other guesses as to who Alex can face. Maybe Jerry Kedret if Morozov is not ready for the left arm match. If he is, I think Alex Kordecha is the new East versus West super heavyweight left arm champion. That's my honest opinion and I think he has a very good chance of winning that. Babkin uploaded a video which he started with giving away the Denis Siplenkov card for the most liked comment which is always cool. Then he said that they couldn't prepare as much as they should have or could have because of some medical problems. So Denis Siplenkov's health is still not the best that it has ever been or as it can be in the future. So it looked like as if Dennis was not pushing himself. Maybe he was talking about the preparation. Maybe he was talking about the steroid cycle because everybody uses them now. So these two things can be considered. And it was always suggested by Dennis in the past as well that he's going to be this much percent for John, this much percent, 85% for Devon, and then 100% for Levan. Of course, 85% for Devon didn't work out. So he was kind of, I'll say, fearful for not going all out in the preparation. He might fall sick once again, and that's the problem. So should Dennis risk his health once again to just get to the top, or should he be more careful? He's, he's going to get his hip checked. I don't know what the issue with that is. Left shoulder checked, and his kidneys tested as well. So bunch of problems. And now I'll have to appreciate Babkin for that because he brought Artem Tainov on his channel as well. He built up a big YouTube channel, and now he's helping out these athletes as well. So it's clearly working. Now okay, I kind of understand the point there. And it's it's good for these arm wrestlers, for Dadikian as well. Although Dennis doesn't really need anyone's help. He just needs in recording and posting. But any social media platform is going to work if Dennis is included there. So I hope Dennis comes back and I hope he stays healthy. He can somehow find a way between these two things. Jerry Cadret has said a bunch of times on Paul Italia's podcast that he is going to compete in January. But against who? He never talks about that. He was talking a lot of trash talk against Hermes Gasparini, saying that he was only 55%, otherwise he would have defeated. If he didn't have pneumonia, he would have been the champion, not Hermes Gasparini. Engin was more than willing to give him that super match. And Hermes was also more than willing to give him that super match. They both agreed. But then Jerry Cadet was asked about if the opponent is Hermes, and he clearly said no. So why? Didn't he accept that match when he was himself calling out Hermes, kind of uh, degrading Hermes Gasparini's victory over himself and now not accepting that match? It's kind of weird. Artem Morozov said that I will be back in January because I love my wife. Whatever loving your wife has to do with that. So is it Jerry versus Morozov? I think it is because if Morozov versus Kordecha is not happening, then for sure Jerry versus Morozov should happen because Hermes Gasparini match is not having not happening. He wants that Devon match, but I don't think Devon is that much interested. So maybe only Morozov is left as of now. But Morozov is a beast. He can compete both left and right. And I think both of these matches are going to be really difficult for him if he in fact competes. Arm Olymp uploaded a video with Dadikian saying that East versus West 11 match. He's going to compete there. So who can be his opponent? There are only two names that can Qualify for that match. Number one is Todzilla Todhachings, who is the current champion. And number two, we have Kidargali Ongarbay. And I would like the Todzilla match more. Why? Because if Dadikian loses to Todd Hutchings, then we can still see the Kidargali Ongarbay match against Dadikian. Because uh, both of them defeated Irakli Zirakashvili. That match makes sense. But if the first match is Ongarbay and Dadikian loses that, then the Todd Hutchings match is not going to happen. It just wouldn't make sense. Thanks for watching. Like the video and subscribe.